Okay, so when you plug in your LabQuest 2, most of the time it just comes on. And like I said, if it doesn't, there's the red power button to turn it on. On the same side as the red power button, underneath these little black flaps, on the first one are the two digital ports. Uh, these are used for like, with like motion detectors and stuff like that. We will not need these with the sensors we are sending out in the introductory uh, sensor package. The second black flap has three plugins, one for a speaker, one for a microphone, and one for a small SD card, so a mini SD card. So that's what's underneath that. If you flip it the other way, now you're going to see a USB port, and now you're going to see channels one, two, and three which are the channels for the analog plugins, which is all the sensors that we are sending you will either plug into here or the one does plug into the USB, which we'll show you in a minute. On the other side, nothing. And on the last side, there is a stylus that is kind of nice to use when you're touching the screen and doing uh, things on there. The other two are for power, and we're not going to worry about those as well because we have it plugged into the wall. Once you have the sensor, or the, once you have this plugged in, it will rotate the screen. So I just adjusted it and let it rotate. The first one that comes up is for sensors. And once you plug a sensor in, you will actually see the sensor go right away. So we're going to plug in a temperature sensor to begin with. And right away, you see the temperature comes up. It's already ready to go. Based off of your lab that you are going to run, you will need to adjust the rate at which it collects. And you do that by clicking this box here that has the mode, rate, and duration. You click on that box. Now you can adjust the rate, the interval, the duration. You can have it It's in seconds. You can change it to milliseconds, minutes, or hours based off of the lab that you are doing. So that's how you change the collection rate. Once you have it plugged in, you can hit the little play button and it will now start collecting your data. Once you've collected the data or it completely times out, uh, it will stop. If you need to stop it before then, there is a red stop button that you can hit. I'm going to collect just a little bit of data here and then we'll stop it and we'll look at what it does. So you see that it auto scales it right away once you're done. Now I've also gone from the first one which was the actual like what is happening with the temperature sensor right now. The second one is going across the top is for the graph. I'll come back to this one in a second. Going across the top now the next one is dealing with the table. So if you want to go in and look at your raw data, you could look at the raw data. The next one you click on is the uh, red lab instructions. You can view, view lab instructions. A lot of the labs that are in the lab books are in here, so you can click on these to look at what lab is available. And based off of the lab, then you can click on it and it will actually have the lab instructions or you can print them out and give them to your kids that way as well. The last top button is just for taking notes. So if you wanted the kids to take notes in here, they could, but you don't have to. So going back to the graph, right now on the graph we can do some analyzing. So when you look on here, there's all kinds of different ways to analyze. You can analyze um, looking at the statistics of the graph, you can do a curve fit. You've got all different kinds of ways to analyze and depending on the lab that you're doing they may ask you to analyze it. They actually also have here, this is where you can draw a prediction. So with that I can hit draw prediction. I can actually draw what I think is going to happen and I can click OK. Now when you run it that prediction will be there for the kids to look at. Over here, the right next to Run 1, there's looks like a little file cabinet. If you click on that, it stores Run 1, and you notice that that went away. If I click the button again to start collecting, you'll notice that we've got a graph going again. Data is being collected. I'll 
go ahead and stop. And that's my run two. You can see by there. So if I want to, I can click on run two. I could go back and look at run, run one, or I can look at all the runs together. So one thing you need to think about before you start collecting the data is how do you want the kits to, to at the end, have that data? So one thing you could do is you could do run your normal run and then at the end use a thumb drive and just plug it in to the side right here and then that will collect the data. You could then save it to there or, okay, so now we're going to make this accessible. So we're going to click on the button right next to the home button that looks like Wi-Fi. We're going to make sure that that is turned on. So make sure the first thing you do is turn the Wi-Fi on by clicking the on button. Click over here next to it. We're going to create a network. Okay, we created it as table two. We're gonna go ahead and click OK. Now, before we go anywhere else, we wanna change the name of this lab quest. If not, every lab quest that you have set up in the room will say lab quest. So we're just gonna go in here and we're gonna call this lab quest 12. So what we did is we now have it on network table two. We have the name as lab quest 12. So now we're ready to connect our devices to here before we collect data. So now we're going to show you on three different devices. We're going to go into our Wi-Fi on the device. We're going to be looking for that table two. I see table two on mine. Once it has table two and it says it's an unsecured network, then we're ready to go into our graphical analysis app. When you get to here, there's three options. We're going to go to the second one that says data sharing, and we're going to click on that. When you click on that, you should see the LabQuest 12 come up. We're going to click on that LabQuest 12. And now we're ready to collect data. So now on to back onto our device. I'm going to click out of here. We're back to our main screen with the temperature. We're going to go ahead and hit collect. And you'll notice on all three devices, we should be collecting data. We'll just collect a little bit of data. Once I stop, you're going to see that all three of them have the data collected. Now, one thing you'll notice if you go in on this device, on this LabQuest 2, and start doing any type of analyzing, so like if I go in here and I do like, let's say just statistics of it, okay, now it gave me the statistics. It did not do that on these. All that the students have now is this data. They can still go in on their devices and do the statistics but they have to click that on their device now. So what that does is it gives them the data. Ready. Okay, so the other sensors that we have in there, you have conductivity. Conductivity plugs in the same way that the temperature probe does. You also have a pH, which also plugs in the same port here as well. So those all plug in here. The only one that's different, I'm gonna unplug the temperature probe. I'm gonna hit file new and I want to discard my data so now I'm back to a blank screen so the plugins for the SpectroViz Plus are a little different it is a USB plug and it just plugs in right on the side and then this plugs right into the side of the SpectroViz Plus And right now you see when it came up, it's saying the full spectrum. 
and it shows that it's a USB, USB. If I go ahead and hit collect, right now it's trying to take a, a sample, but right now there's nothing in there, but it's gonna go ahead and, and do a warm up. It will take a little bit of time for it to warm up, but after it's done doing a warm up, you will then put a blank cuvette into here, which will then allow it to do a blank. And that's what it shows right here when you're gonna do a blank. After you've done the blank, then you're ready to collect data. So inside the tub of the SpectroViz, there'll be a Ziploc bag with cuvettes. The cuvettes come and there's one side that's clear and one side that's kind of shaded. And so you want to make sure that you have the clear side. It actually has an arrow on them that it goes to the arrow of the SpectroViz. So I have a blank one here. I'm going to go ahead and put that blank down in and then I'm going to hit the finish calibration. And it finished it. Now I can click OK. And now I'm ready to run whatever sample I have. So I'll take the blank one back out and now I'm ready to run the samples.